Hi, my name is Marion Landry, and today I'm going to give you a tips and tricks on how to file link or import your DWG drawing from AutoCAD to 3ds Max Design and interpolate those round and organic objects into smooth objects once you're in 3ds Max Design. So first thing you need to know is that AutoCAD, when you create organic or round object, they are created as NURBS and once you will file link or import them in 3ds Max Design, they will be interpolated as quadrants or polygon objects. So there's a couple of tips you need to know in order to interpolate this round surface or organic surface and have something nice and smooth. So the first thing we'll need to check is make sure to use the same unit setup that we are using in AutoCAD in 3ds Max Design. So let's go to the top view of this project and we'll take a quick measurement here. So let's measure the out exterior wall of our bathroom and it's measuring 13 feet, 1 and 15, 16 inches. So this is the measurements that we want to have in 3ds Max Design once we imported this bathroom project. Okay, so in 3ds Max Design, we're going to go to the Customize menu and call the Unit Setup window. In here, we'll make sure that their System Unit Setup is set to inches. So let's change this to 1 unit equal 1 inches. And make sure that we're using the US standard, which is feet and inches. So now that we have the same unit set up, we'll go ahead and file link our DWG file. So we're going to file link the DWG, but just so you know, you can also import and you will be faced with the same preset option. So let's use the file link manager window and point to our bathroom DWG file. So let's open that. Now the thing that you want to make sure is to use a AutoCAD preset. So DWG file saved from AutoCAD. So let's have a look at this preset the way it is now. So we're going to just click on the modify button. And this is the default preset window that you'll be exposed to. So right now, um, the curve step is set to 10 and the maximum surface deviation for 3D solid is set to 1 inches. And you understand these settings really quickly once I've imported the drawing. Now you want to make sure as well to import the sun and sky from the AutoCAD drawing as well as the views and camera because I'm going to use the camera from the DWG file. I'm going to go ahead and save this because I've changed these options below. Go back to the attach file and attach this file. The mental ray sky window will pop up and I'm just going to click yes. So before I go to my camera view, let's go to the top view here and create this measurement to make sure that our file is actually imported with the same unit scale. So I'm going to go to the control panel under helpers and call for the tape measurements. You can go to a wireframe view to help me out. And I'm going to use the snap object 2.5. So I'm going to measure the exterior wall. And here, if I go back to the control panel, we'll see that I have the exact same measurement. So 13 feet, 1, 26 and 32 inches. So this is the exact same file that I have at the exact same unit scale. So now I know that whatever I'm going to add on or place in this scene is going to be using the same unit. And this is really important if you're looking for accuracy. OK, so I'm going to go to the camera view. And you know that the camera gets interpreted a little bit different in 3ds Max Design. So I'm just going to select the camera and change the lens to be a 15 millimeter lens. So you'll recognize this similar view from AutoCAD. So first thing you will notice is the objects that are organic or round are really faceted. And this is not really what I'm looking for. I'm looking more for a smooth surface. Now, if I call the statistic, you'll see that the number of polygons is 25,000 polygons. So this is quite low for that kind of scene and it's quite reasonable, but definitely I'm going to want to in increase the tessellation of this surface. So I'm just going to call the edge faces and you'll see that the tessellation of these objects is quite low as well. So they've been interpreted with the default setting for most of the scene. So you see that the shower is fine. Uh, most of the object is fine, but the objects that are smaller could be faceted it a little bit higher to give me a smoother result. So if I look back at the preset that I've used to file link this DWG file, you'll see that the curve step is a number of 10. So my curve 
once they're in 3ds max design actually have 10 segments to create this curve and the surface deviation for 3d solids so these are 3d solids is to one inches so so the polygon will be interpreted into one inches polygon so obviously i'm going to want to increase this but by increasing these the maximum surface deviation for 3d solid you'll definitely increase the amount of polygon so in here you'll see three different options of adjustments that I'm doing to the curve and maximum surface deviation in the preset. So this is the preset that we are using. So we have 25,000 polygon, but the surface that we have imported that are curve objects are really not up to the part and I want something a little bit more smooth. So the next image, you'll see that I have increased the curve steps and I've also increased the maximum surface deviation to 832 inches instead of 1 inches. So you'll see that my mesh objects are a little bit more dense, but I've also increased the amount of polygon. But still, this is not really cutting it for me. I want something a little bit more smooth. So I'm going to increase it in the next image. You'll see here that I'm increasing it to the surface deviation to 132 inches and 30 step in a curve and now you see that my objects the mesh is quite dense but I am getting a nice and smooth object here but definitely the polygon count is a little bit higher now this is a small scene and 53,000 polygon is not really not a big deal for 3ds max design it's going to start making a difference depending on your graphic cards when you go up to a million polygon or two million polygons and stuff like that so don't worry too much about 53,000 polygon because now you'll have a nice result. Okay, so I created a small render of this file and so far everything looks good. It's looking like the toilets are quite round and the sink and this object here mm, it might be a little bit too square, but I've created a closer rendering of the toilets and still I'm seeing faceted object and this is really not what I'm looking for. So keep in mind that if you're going to do a close-up, you're going to want to have something a lot smoother than this. But if you're going to stay far, this might work for you. There is one more thing you can do once you're in 3ds Max design that's going to help the smoothing of these objects without adding any more polygons. So I'm going to select the toilet object and I'm going to go to my control panel, modifier tools and select the smooth modifier. This will apply a smooth modifier on top of my linked geometry. And in here, I'm going to make sure that under the parameter, I'm using the auto smooth option. So visually, nothing happened. But you'll see that if I render a close up, I will now have a round and smooth object. So I'm going to apply this smooth modifier to my faucet because I think this is still too faceted. So you see a little bit here. If I turn off the edge faces, maybe you'll see a little bit more of the result. So you see it's faceted and now it's smooth. So basically what this auto smooth is doing, it's basically just interpolating these polygon in between each other into a smooth object. So I'm going to apply that again to my ashtray and use the auto smooth and you see the result again. And I'm going to apply it to both of my sink because I think they could use a little bit of help as well. So this is not adding more polygons. You see the polygon count is still the same. It's basically interpolating these polygon into smooth object in between each other. So with my object that now have a smooth modifier, I have re-rendered some of the close-up and you see now that the toilet object is really nice and smooth interpreted and I haven't added any amount of polygon. So compare with what I have before I apply that smooth modifier object, you'll see that the result is a lot better, especially if I'm going to do close-up on these objects. Now I've also re-rendered the view from the camera and we can compare it to what I have before. So from far you couldn't see the toilet object. I don't see that much differences, but definitely I see differences on my faucet object. So you see that the reflection is a lot smoother and doesn't give me the strike. So basically the best trick I can give you here is find a perfect surface deviation that works for your scene and apply a smooth modifier on the object that you're going to see up close and just find the perfect ratio in between adding more polygon or adding a smooth modifier or a combination of both depending on the object you have in your scene.